Lesson 3, the Network Parameters Window. This is Chris Georges with TrafficLabs.com and in this lesson we're going to dive into the Network Parameters Window. So let's pick up where we left off in Lesson 2. Before we start, I need to talk about this button to the left of the Network Parameters Window. In previous lessons, we talked about the three levels of our network. Network, Arterial, Intersection. Typically, true traffic models only contain one timing plan per network. So you may have an AM hour network with 10 arterials and 40 intersections, but you would create a new file for the PM timing plan with the same 40 intersections. The maturing of the software is allowing more and more flexibility to the user so that multiple timing plans can be in a single network or, or a single file. And that is what the Choose Timing Plan button can be used for. My 1 AM network of lights can be used in the PM or midday and I can choose which timing plans in the network I'm using. In our example, I'll expand the model into three timing plans. We have the AM, which we created in earlier lessons, but I'll add a PM for midday. In our example, I'll expand the model into three timing plans. We have the AM, which we created in earlier lessons, but I'll add a midday and PM timing plans. I'll do this by clicking on the Choose Timing Plan button and clicking on Add Timing Plan twice. The first box is going to ask us if we want to import the volumes from the previous timing plans. We will click no when asked if we want to import the volumes because the volumes will be unique with a new timing plan. Now you might want to click yes if you are looking at various options for your AM timing plans. For instance, during the optimization process, you may want to have an AM plan with an 80 second cycle length, and you want to look at your network with a 100 second cycle length. Both, time, both AM timing plans would have the same volume. So we do want to click yes. In our situation, we're going to click no. Now let's start to dive into all the buttons available in the Network Parameters window. We have talked about naming your timing plan, notes, and cycle length. The next button is called the View Constraints button. It's a helpful button when you're choosing your base cycle length. A, ba a table is displayed that has looked at every intersection in your network and tells you what is the minimum cycle length for that intersection. This is a big signal timing concept that requires further studying, and in this tutorial I'll probably oversimplify. One column outlines from clearance times, which is a way of showing what is the minimum time associated with advanced warning flasher plus yellow plus red. All of our intersections show 10.5 seconds because we really haven't defined anything yet. But we can still look at how that number was arrived at. For the Duke Brambleton intersection, we have 0 plus 3 plus 0.5, which gives us 3.5. Now there's three, fa three phases in that ring. So 3.5 times 3 equals 10.5 seconds. So we, we now know that our cycle length needs to be longer than 10.5 seconds if we want to satisfy clearance requirements for that intersection. Another column is from fixed splits. Splits refer to the amount of time a particular movement is allowed, which will start to get confusing because this value is dependent on clearance time. In our example, we get 10.5 seconds again because we have yet to specify a minimum split for our phases. The last column is from critical V over C ratio and is classified as a soft constraint as it should not have the same weight as the other constraints. If you put this data in, you can read the constraint. In other lessons, we'll talk more about cycle lengths and how this button can aid in our decision. The next button, labeled the T equals zero, lets you know where exactly your vehicle is in relation to the exact time and not something I will call relative time. This feature is not as critical you will probably be fine if this box is left unchecked. This works when you have connected a GPS receiver to the file and have synced um, the time clock. You will notice that the, t, the time equals zero darker line now corresponds to an actual time in the day. Notice how this line now has specific time descriptor. More advanced diagrams may find this necessary, but 
but for most diagrams, we'll leave this unchecked. The next button, Synchronize Vertical and Horizontal Scales, works as expected and will make sure all arterials in a network show the same number of cycles or seconds per inch in the vertical or seconds per inch in the scale. This can be helpful if you want to compare arterials and need the scales to be the same. This feature can be helpful when optimizing out in the field or for printouts. Notice how the checkbox trumps parameters in the intersection window. The last box, Flow Baseline on Platoon Progression Diagrams, is another feature when coordinating that will help the user visualize the, visualize the platoon of vehicles in a network. Now as it states, you have to be in the platoon progression diagram to see anything. A way to think about this is that research has determined the ideal flow is 1900 vehicles per hour per lane. Now there are a lot of factors to, to decrease this value like street width or whether or not you have on street parking. But the biggest factor is probably the number of lanes, as this is 1,900 vehicles per hour per lane. Obviously, four southbound lanes can handle more cars than two southbound lanes. And as a driver, knowing that the number of available lanes can change, and that just because on one end of the street has four lanes, but it next down to two lanes, that at some portion as you're traveling from four to two, the four will start to act like the two, even though you haven't, even though you still have four lanes. And these these little radio buttons ask you, how do you want true traffic to limit the saturation flow? Do you want it to limit it by link, by arterial, or by network? Let's finish with the header footer logos tab. This is a place where you can add a logo to your arterial diagram sheet. I will add a small JPEG logo I have to show what is possible. Again, this is Chris Georges with TrafficLabs.com, and look for more videos on YouTube by searching for True Traffic 9.0 or by going to TrafficLabs.com website. Thanks. <laughs>